problem is with this lack of definition and this, this kind of potential for greenwashing, there's this problem that it becomes actually just a buzzword. It's just a label that especially companies just slap on, on what they're doing to say, oh yes, we're doing a good thing. Uh, but also in the investment world, I think um, a lot of people will look at what the ratings are out there, like, you know, sort of blanket ESG ratings. Um, and there's a couple of things that kind of just basically get tied up within that ESG rating, which, you know, sort of the environmental, the social and the governance that all get put together. Um, so I think there's a lack of clarity. And, and with that lack of clarity, there's a potential for two kinds of greenwash. There's that, that, that first type of greenwash, I would say, which is intentional. So um, you're kind of, you're a company, you're an asset manager, and you're kind of disguising maybe some aspects of your investment, not having particularly good rate um, environmental or social governance metrics with an overall rating, which comes out as quite, comes out quite well. Um, and then there's the kind of lack of clarity type of greenwashing, which I think if you talk to the regular person about what they would think of greenwashing, this is probably more important, which is you see a rating and you don't really understand what it means. Um, and actually it kind of hides things which they value um, and kind of um, isn't particularly useful. Um, and I think that goes back to the, the point about data. So what open finance is really good at is channeling data directly from institutions um, towards the individual in a personalized way. Um, and I think so what we're doing at Sugi and, and, and other, other companies are doing is trying to bring that, bring that information in a kind of relatable, um, personalized, so people can sort of check which ones they're interested in and maybe disregard other ones. Um, so basically, yeah, kind of, kind of decreasing that, that kind of barrier of, of information. Hopefully, with the increased focus from this year and onwards, we will be seeing a much better standards adopted globally uh, so that we have like a fair comparison uh, uh, to compare companies against each other. And open finance definitely will be helping um, even to an individual user being able to see, like right now in the UK, because I think open banking is not something that's available in all countries, but in the UK right now, open banking helps me see within one app what my overall financial situation looks like across different banks but adding a layer of how my mortgages look across different banks or how what my investments are invested across different industries like having that level of transparency will definitely make me as a user ask more questions automatically uh, so that's definitely something that we are uh, hoping that the world will move towards. There's always, you know, that, that the hype cycle and then the sort of, you know, trough of despondency and the plateau of productivity, if you remember that whole cycle. Um, and we're definitely, you know, in a sort of a, a hype cycle here. Um, and it's key, I think, that, you know, the fintech community um, gets involved to make sure that we get you know, real to the plateau of productivity, if you will, really fast, because this is really important. I mean, you know, S and G is super important, but ultimately if we haven't got a planet to live on, S and G doesn't matter.